the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you, Papa God, for inviting us to gather today to listen to your word. We ask you to strengthen us. We ask you to give us the direction we need for the following week. Place in your hands what we have lived this week, all our studies, our work, our relationships. Continue to make us grow in love and joyful to follow your will. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Again, good morning. How are you? Perhaps many of us have been doing a lot of things in the start of the class and also some work relationships, issues, and all of this. And it is a good time to take a pause, take a break with God, our Father. He wants to console us. He wants to be with us. He wants to speak to our hearts. And let us listen to him. This is our time to pray. And when we say a pray, a prayer, it means uh, putting all our attention to God our mind, our heart, or body. Because it is possible that our body are here, but our mind are thinking of what was happening uh, on other places, what happened before, or our hearts are on other issues, not on this. This is, a, let's say, small time, just a 10, 20, 30 minutes of a moment. Let us try to put our efforts as well to give it to the person we love and the person who loves us the most. We have been discovering that God is love and how much he loves us. Let us listen to what Jesus will say about God the Father in the New Testament. There we can find the parable of the prodigal son. In that way, Jesus is showing us the true face of the Father, because we have a lot perhaps of misconceptions still consciously and unconsciously that is in our hearts. And he continues to bring out that uh, beauty of God the Father who is with us and not against us. He is with us and for us. And as we pray on this passage that we are about to read, let us put ourselves in the characters of each of them the father, the prodigal son, the servants, the elder son. And let us uh, think that we are the director. We are doing this movie, a film. We are Mel Gibson or Stephen Spielberg. And we are also actors and actresses. Because this, this parable is not something far or away or distant from us. But this is our life. And it speaks to our hearts. Let us put our ears as we listen to the word of God for today. Okay, lights, camera, action. Then Jesus said, a man had two sons, 12 and the young... And the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, and he found himself in dire need. So he heard himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his, to he, to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. 
coming to his senses, he thought, How many of my father's hard workers have more than enough food to eat? But here am I, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you will treat one of your hard workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, Quickly, bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast, because this son of man was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then, then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, Your brother has returned and your father has slaughtered the fat and calf because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughtered the fattened calf. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. With whom do you identify yourself in the gospel, in the parable? With the father, with the prodigal son, with the elder son, or with the servants? I would like to focus on these three characters for now. The prodigal son, the older son, and the servants. Who is the prodigal son? He is a child who chose not to live with his father anymore and to live his own life according to his own way with all the gifts, with all the treasures that he is, that he has. He did this and he did that. And he ended up uh, spending all his money and a pandemic came, <laughs> a famine came. He lost everything he had. He needed to hire himself as a servant, feeding the pigs. And from that time, when he hit the bottom rock, he remembered the servants. He remembered his father. And he said to himself, I would like to be like the servants because at least they can still eat better than me, myself here, I cannot even eat these foods of the pigs. I'm even worse than them. Who is the prodigal son? Do you know anyone who is like the prodigal son? Who is lost? Do we feel 
like the prodigal son, far away from God, alone. What does he feel? When he came back to his father, thinking that he is already unworthy of being his child, he was caught in surprise that his father ran to him when he saw him. And he even said, this son of mine was dead and has come to life again, was lost and has been found. The father is merciful. He was moved by compassion. He asked the servants, bring the finest robe. It's like saying, this is my chef. Bring back his dignity. He is my chef. And this is God the Father. He never abandons us. He never leaves us. He doesn't treat us as any other thing. He loves us as his child. And we all have different experiences of God the Father in our lives. Some of us have experienced him as someone who never leaves or someone who loves unconditionally. What is your personal experience of God the Father? Every time I read this gospel of the prodigal son that perhaps you have read a lot of times already, but it is so profound that we can continue to deepen on it. I always remember an experience I had when I got lost as well. <laughs> I was 12 years old then when I got lost. We were traveling from our old house to our new house. It's not even a city. It's just a change of barangay. From barangay Pandakan to barangay Kahilong Tres. And we were poor. We didn't have a lot of things to have a truck to transfer all of this. We were the one who just carried our baggage, our backpacks to travel and walking. So with my family, we just walk going to our new house. And then in the middle of the road, I decided to play hide and seek with my sisters. So, oh, you're dead. Oh, you're dead. <laughs> they were just laying that behind the cars, behind the, the trees while we were walking. And then it was my turn already to close my eyes. So I closed my eyes and then I counted 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Then I opened it. <laughs> I tried to look for my sisters. Oh, where are you? Wow, you're so good in hiding. Huh? I cannot see. I cannot see you. Huh? Well, so I was looking, looking, looking. I couldn't see anyone. And reality struck me. Couldn't find my parents too. <laughs> I was alone. I got lost. And then I began to cry. And I realized that. I cry. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know how to go back to our old house. So in the middle of nowhere, I was just walking there blindly, crying. And then I saw a grotto of Mother Mary. I didn't know Mother Mary. I wasn't that religious before. But I saw people who are praying to her, including my grandmother. So that is when, for the very first time of my life, I knelt down, crying, and I prayed in front of Mother Mary. I am lost. Nawawala ako. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. I am alone. Help me. And then suddenly two boys came in, approached me, and asked me, boy, boy, are you lost? And then I said, I remember my mother telling me, don't talk to strangers. <laughs> so I just ignored them. And I just went on, still crying, walking. I don't know. I didn't know where to go. I just walked. 
back. And I suddenly started to trace places already. Oh, wow. I remember this. And I'd been able to go back to our old house. We were living on the second floor then, so I needed to go up from the stairs. And then I tried to open the door. It was locked. So I just sit in front of that. And then still cry. <laughs> After some few hours, I looked down. Um, our door, second floor. And it is unforgettable. I saw my mother. I look at her face. She was worried and concerned about me. She was looking for me. And when I saw her, I ran down through the stairs and hugged her. And all that she said was, Anak, my son. And this experience of being lost and being found is a profound experience of what God is telling us. That He is always there with us. Whenever we, we lost the track in life, Perhaps we, we, we don't feel that today. Or perhaps we experience it before. But someday we will experience it again and again. But when that time comes, we know where to go. We know that our Father will embrace us, will welcome us again and bring back us back our dignity, lift up our face again, like this moving picture. He was really looking down. And the father was feeling to recover who we are truly. This is the father for me. This is the father I would like to share to many. And we can discover more of his love, his merciful love. Do you feel like the prodigal son? Are you the prodigal daughter? Or do you know someone who experienced like this? Let us go back to the father. And then we also have the older son. Do we feel like the older son? Do we feel like life is unfair? We have been trying to do good. We have been trying to please God. We have been trying to go to mass, pray rosary, or whatever religious activities we do. But how come he still loves him like that? It feels like he loves other people more than me. Wow. This is the experience of the older son. He feels jealous of those who he seen. Oh, how come this guy is sinful? I hate this guy. How come, how come the father loves him? My experience as well. <laughs> now that I already know God the father, there are times, oh, <laughs> this, this guy is uh, like, he's not doing well. <laughs> but how come par parang like God is always favoring this person still? But because God is not what we many times think of him. He's not a judge who counts, okay, this is how many good things you have done already. This is your compensation. This is your payment. No, it's not like that. It's not a taskmaster, just like what the elder brother said. I've been doing what you want. I, I never disobeyed you. But why are you doing that? Is it out of fear or is it out of love? Is it because of your own selfish interest or because of your self-giving of charity? Why are we giving what we give? What? Why are we doing what we do? Why are we trying to love? Why, why are we trying to study well, to love our parents, to try to reconcile with those whom we don't like? Why? God the Father is inviting us to remember who we are in front of him. He said, my son, you are with me here always. Everything I have is yours. 
if you lack something, if you feel insecure, I will give you what you need. Everything I have is yours. This is Father. There is no need to, to get jealous or there is no need to feel insecure. If we don't live, if we don't know who God is, we, that is when we live in loneliness, in sadness, in depression. Not only theoretically we must know who God is, but deep inside our hearts. And that is when we start to grow in maturity. When we live in the house of the Father. And lastly, we have the servants. He was the one behind the scene always. <laughs> he was the one with the father when he met the prodigal son. And he was there willing to serve the prodigal son. To give the robe, to put the sandals. And he was also there when the older son went back at home. He was the one who said to the older son what was happening, that there was a celebration. And I imagine he was the one also who talked to the father to reconcile with him. That Yo, your, your older son is there, out there. He was the one willing to help because he is also helped by the father. He is loved. And this, this servant, in fact, if we will pray about it spiritually, this is Jesus. Jesus is the servant who loved us as children of God. And he wanted us to go back to the Father. He put back our dignity. He wanted us to reconcile with him. And Jesus is calling people to also help others to go back to the Father. And this is why I am here also. I feel this calling, like many of the missionaries too, to be a servant of God the Father. We have experienced this love and we want many others to experience this love too. We live out of gratitude of the Father. We do not serve like, oh, because this is our job, we need to serve. We serve because we want to serve people. We want to serve the Father. We want to bring people back to Him, to His love. How about you? I go, again, out of the three characters in the parable, with whom do you see yourself? The prodigal son, the older son, the servants. Whoever you feel you are, Papa wants to embrace you today. To strengthen you again. To know that you are not alone that He is always there to provide, that He will give us what we need. Let us uh, have a little time of silence to pray with the help of these kind questions. Take time to slowly read again personally, Luke 15, 11 to 32, the prodigal son. What part of the word of God struck you the most and why? With whom do you see yourself and why? Prodigal son, the older son, or the servant.